I'm going to take you through the eicosanoid system very quickly. This system is key in the inflammatory response. And anytime we have some sort of cellular injury or cellular damage, the story begins with the cell itself. The cell membranes, remember, are made out of phospholipids. You can see them here. They've got their tail region, their hydrophobic tail, and their hydrophilic heads. When a cell becomes damaged, we now have phospholipid remnants out in the body. The body needs to deal with these, and what it will do is break it down so that it can be removed from the systemic circulation. The enzyme that does this is called phospholipase A2, or PLA2 for short. And what phospholipase A2 breaks down phospholipids into is a substance called arachidonic acid. And generally, if arachidonic acid is around, it is considered a pro-inflammatory substance. Depending upon which part of the body we are in, there is a predominant enzyme that will act upon arachidonic acid. A large part of the respiratory tract, including upper, so anything above the larynx, and lower, larynx down, is rich in an enzyme called lipoxygenase, or LOX for short. And LOX breaks down arachidonic acid into component parts called leukotrienes. And leukotrienes are pro-inflammatory proteins. Whenever leukotrienes are created and around, they cause an inflammatory response, redness, swelling, um, inflammation, excessive blood flow, edema formation. So those are a pro-inflammatory protein created by the LOX enzyme having broken down arachidonic acid. In most of the body, the predominant enzyme is cyclooxygenase, or the COX enzyme. And cyclooxygenase works upon the same arachidonic acid, but rather than creating the byproduct of leukotrienes, the byproduct here is of the class of eicosanoids, which include prostaglandins and thromboxanes. Prostaglandins are pro-inflammatory proteins that are key in general cell mechanisms like creating and maintaining the mucus layer in the stomach. So we have a nice integral, strong mucosal layer. They're key in kidney function, and they're also important in precipitating uterine contractions and labor. In inflammation, Prostaglandins are key in facilitating the vasodilatory response, leading to more blood flow and edema formation in an area, but more importantly, leading to vasodilation that will let white blood cells out of blood vessels to go fight anything associated with the acute inflammatory response. Prostaglandins are also important for changing the homeostatic set point of the body temperature, so driving that up, creating a fever so that our bacterial replication goes down and also our immune cells work more effectively when at higher temperatures. And then finally, prostaglandins are important for sensitizing no susceptors or pain receptors so that we become more sensitive to pain. And if that cellular injury happened in an area, when it hurts, we are less likely to use that part of the body. So that facilitates healing. So cyclooxygenase COX enzyme breaks down arachidonic acid into prostaglandins, pro-inflammatory proteins, which are key for inflammatory responses to occur, but also key for integral normal physiologic activities to occur, like maintenance of the mucosal barrier of the stomach. Finally, we have the last eicosanoid I'll be speaking about today, which is also a remnant of the 
arachidonic acid conversion by cyclooxygenase, and that's thromboxane, or TXA2. And thromboxane is one of the key signaling mechanisms by which platelets call other platelets to the scene so they can form a platelet plug or a clot. So when arachidonic acid is broken down by cyclooxygenase, we get these pro-inflammatory prostaglandin proteins, and we also get thromboxanes, which help with the clotting cascade. Now, to tie this all together, with the beginning of these phospholipids that are broken down by phospholipase A2 turned into arachidonic acid, which is then acted upon by either lipoxygenase enzymes or cyclooxygenase enzymes, creating pro-inflammatory proteins referred to collectively as eicosanoids. Pharmacologically, we can also prevent this cascade from happening at a couple of different points. First off, we have steroids. So steroids block activity of phospholipase A2. So steroids like cortisone, um, hydrocortisone, prednisone, those block phospholipase A2 activity so that we never get the creation of arachidonic acid. And so therefore, steroids are highly anti-inflammatory. We also have medications that inhibit activity of the lipoxygenase enzymes or prevent the binding of leukotrienes to their site of activity. Lipoxygenase inhibitors, so LOX inhibiting drugs, those include things like Singular, things that are used for allergies or for asthma. Because lipoxygenase is so prevalent in the respiratory tract, Medications that inhibit lipoxygenase activity or leukotriene binding are very important and key in the treatment of asthma and allergies. Finally, we have medications that interfere with cyclooxygenase activity or COX inhibiting medications. Those include NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These substances, which include ibuprofen, aspirin, they prevent the activity of COX upon arachidonic acid, thereby blocking prostaglandin formation and the resulting inflammatory response and thromboxane production and the clotting response, which is why you can see NSAIDs used for things like fever, so lowering a fever, getting rid of pain, like when you have a headache or any kind of pain response, um, and then also taking for prophylactic or preventative reasons for stroke or any kind of thrombus formation because you're reducing the likelihood of platelets forming a plug and then a clot. You'll also, though, <clears throat> notice that NSAIDs do have bad effects on the stomach. They are associated with ulceration because of their important role in maintaining the integrity of the mucosal barrier of the stomach. Also taking lots of NSAIDs can cause kidney dysfunction and relative increases in bleeding time and also affect things like uterine contraction, which is why they're helpful in the menstrual pains that might uh, be the reason somebody is taking an NSAID. So that is your complete cascade. Phospholipids broken down by PLA2. We can block PLA2 with steroids. If arachidonic acid is created, we can also prevent activity of the enzymes that break it down into its component eicosanoid parts either the COX cascade, including NSAIDs, which will block these prostaglandins from being produced, or lipoxygenase inhibiting medications, which limit leukotriene production. And there you have it.